Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. After I posted my Can-Am Commander Awesome Adventures compilation video the other day, someone sent me an email and suggested that I show some of my older videos before I had a side-by-side. -side. So I went through some of my videos and pictures all the way back to 2003, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Those of you who follow my channel probably know that I go to Newfoundland ATVing probably once every year for the last several years. But what you might not know is where it all started. Back in 2003, my father-in-law and brother-in-laws to be asked me to go to Newfoundland ATVing with them. At the time, I didn't even own an ATV. My father-in-law had two, one that he had bought for himself and his wife, but she never ended up using it. So he said I could use that. It sounded like a great time and I went with them. We knew almost nothing about how to do this trip. We just showed up and winged it. We had a fantastic time. Even though I've been there something like 10 times, I still look forward to going every year. Check out this train trestle here in Robinson's. Way back then, it didn't even have rails on the side of it. Unfortunately, I didn't even have a video camera back then. What I did have was my very first digital camera with a very small memory card. I never even made it back to Newfoundland again until 2009 when my wife and I took a West Coast tour in our Jeep. Luckily for me, she was game enough to bring my ATV so we could do some touring on the old rail bed. I showed her a few of my favorite places like the Gaff Topsail and the Howley area. We were even fortunate enough to see some wildlife that year. I didn't have a GoPro, but I did have a handheld camera which took some pretty shaky video. That's my wife doing her best to pretend she doesn't like ATV. Actually, she likes going out on ATV rides. She just doesn't like being the driver. That's my old Sportsman 600. That thing was a tank. I went back again in 2011 with my brother-in-law. We went all the way around the province from east to west. We did some camping every other night or so, and uh, as per usual in Newfoundland, how can you not have a good time? This was the first year I went from east to west, and it was also the first year I started documenting what I did online on my uh, blog so that I could share it with everybody else. on the bikes I don't know if you can really see there but that year was my first real experience with how bad the dust can be in Newfoundland uh, it was sunny almost every day and it had been sunny for a few weeks before that so that the uh, the trail was especially dry and dusty we made a lot of miles today almost 200 kilometers Ooh. yeah we were really boogie. Yep, this will be camp for the night. Pretty spot. Beautiful. Yeah, look at that, eh? What a view. Oh. She's pretty windy. Look at the water, you can tell here. Whoa. It's gonna be a loud night in the tent. <laughs> we were really lucky that year. We had great weather the entire trip, barely a drop of rain. We saw some moose, and um, this, this was the first year I met the people down at Pirate's Haven. If you can see here on the Fishel's River Trestle, they had the railings up that year. 
and we came across the biggest washout I've ever seen. Uh, it, it was crazy how big this was. Luckily, it wasn't too bad to cross. Um, we have Jonathan Callman and a group of guys that cut a trail through it that made it passable. I ended up missing 2012 altogether. Uh, I had a trip planned, and then of course it was the exact same week that a hurricane hit. So for 2013, uh, someone I was supposed to go with had to drop out at the last minute. So I put a message on my uh, on my blog mentioning that I wanted to go, and uh, uh, a fellow named Daryl Perrin in Nova Scotia here reached out to me, and I ended up going uh, with their group and. Uh, Great, great group of guys. And one of the fellows, Bob Conrad in that group, uh, has gone with me every year since. 2013 was a great year. We had fantastic weather. I think we only had one day where we had rain, but even then it was so warm, nobody seemed to mind. It was also the first year I bought Moosey on the ferry and brought him on every trip since too. Those of you that have done this trip from east to west are familiar with all the famous water holes just outside of Argentia. For the first 30 kilometers or so, you're going to come across a lot of this. It's not hard to go through. In fact, I find it fun. I like going through them at a pretty good pace. That blue machine that I'm driving is a 2008 Polaris Sportsman 500 HO, and I still wish that I had that machine to this day. I wish I'd never sold it. I loved it. I sold it and bought an 850. Uh, now, the 850 had more power and some more features on it, but I still miss that old, that old Sportsman 500. It was really durable, never gave me any problems. It was tough as nails. This was the only day it rained that year, and uh, it was really warm. We didn't care that we were getting soaked, and uh, we were just driving through the water holes and smashing through them like we were little kids, just making the best of it. This was the last day of 2013, and uh, this section here is not part of the rail bed. We were just exploring a little bit, and uh, in front of me, Murray there was going on his Honda, and uh, he's having a really hard time, and we didn't realize why until we get to the other side later. His, uh, his rear differential was shot and went on the trip and uh, he had it in four wheel drive here and it was just his front wheels pulling him through. Lucky for Murray we were not too far from the ferry and when we came out off this trail we found a couple of guys that were out with a truck and trailer that were out ATV and as well we told them what happened and one of the fellas 
uh, put Murray's ATV in the back of his trailer and took it down to the ferry terminal for us. A typical Newfoundlander, as I always say. Always go out of their way to give somebody a helping hand. It might not look it, but this trail here is really steep. And you may have noticed that uh, I'm driving a different ATV in 2014. It's another Sportsman. It's green. I bought a second one. And um, I re my father-in-law had sold his long ago. And uh, he wanted to go to Newfoundland again. So I had two ATVs at the time. And he took my blue one that I drove the year before. And I repaid the favor from him from 2003 when he let me drive his machine across. We made it to Serpentine Lake and the weather was beautiful. We pitched a few tents, we set up camp, had a great fire. If the weather was miserable, we were going to go to Cornerbrook and get a hotel room, but there was no need to do that. It was a calm, peaceful night and you wouldn't believe how bright the stars are out here. Twenty fifteen. This is the year I bought my uh, Sportsman eight fifty, and uh, it was a nice machine. Had a few problems with it mechanically, um, other than my more than my blue one. But uh, you know, overall, I guess it wasn't too bad of a machine. I uh, had this for about a year before I sold it and bought my Can Am Commander. And this is the uh, first section of the trail on the Argentia side where all those puddles are that I was telling you about earlier. Here comes Bob smashing down some water holes. He still had his Honda rink on back then. Now he has a Can Am Outlander. This section of trail, um, when you're heading east to west, when you're coming up on the uh, gaff tops, is one of my favorite stretches of the trail. It's really flat through here. The alder brushes in this particular area are not too bad. Lots of big boulders and rocks lying around and, and, and uh, lots of lakes. Plus it's fun to watch the gaff topsail in the background there get bigger and bigger as you get closer to it. Wow, look at that dust. Not surprising though, that whole week it was over 30 degrees Celsius, which is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The water was so high in 2015 that uh, we couldn't take this, the beach like we normally do all the way down to a place that we like to camp. 
Um, so we found a trail that somebody had cut in behind the beach that took us out to the spot we wanted to go. I'm sure you can tell by now that I really like Serpentine Lake, and I haven't had a chance to camp there since 2015. I'm hoping to in 2020, but with what's going on in the world right now, it's hard to say. Our entire trip might be cancelled. Um, I don't know yet, but we'll have to see. Hopefully not. As you can see here, we drove quite a ways in to Serpentine Lake before we found a place to camp the night before. The uh, water's low, we don't mind doing that. But uh, if the water's high, of course, you're pretty limited because you can only drive so far. Uh, you don't want to swamp your ATV. As you'll see here in a second, we had to drive through some water anyways, but uh, it really wasn't that deep. When you're heading west back towards uh, Port of Basque from Serpentine Lake, there's two ways that I know of you can do that. Uh, one is the rail bed, of course, and um, this trail that I'm on right now will take you towards Galance and then to the rail bed. And supposedly it saves some time, uh, but the thing yeah. is, this is fine going here. Uh, some of it was growing in pretty thick, and uh, I haven't been on it since 2015, and I've heard a few people since then say that this is really overgrown now. So as you can see, um, even then some of the sections were pretty overgrown. And really from what I remember, it wasn't that bad getting through. Just a few spots we had to slow down for here to kind of uh, push our way through. But if you were in a side-by-side, -side, especially something big like a Ranger or something, you'd probably have a little more difficult time getting through these sections. Back to the rail bed and back to the dust. And back to Nova Scotia and our way off the ferry, back to get our trucks and cars. You know, I don't know how many people over the years have contacted me uh, and told me that they've done this trip because they found my videos and it convinced them to do it. It looked like we had so much fun in our group. And then they get in touch with me and said, yeah, they had a fantastic time. It was the trip of a lifetime, and they understand what I mean when I put it on my uh, website and then in the videos. When I keep saying it's the trip of a lifetime, they say it really is. And, uh, you know, there's no need to uh, hire a guide if you want. Do what we do. Plan it out yourself and just go with your friends. And, you know, the more the merrier. And uh, it's truly a fantastic time. You, you can't go wrong by doing this trip. If you love the outdoors and you love ATVing, man, you want to do this trip. People have told me that they've come from other provinces. I've met other people from other provinces on this trip from Ontario and Quebec, um, BC one time, and I've had people get in touch with me this year in 2020 to tell me they're coming from um, Ohio and uh, someplace in Europe, um, Spain, I believe. Uh, there's a family coming over that's going to be doing this trip. And, you know, people coming from Ohio and other places down in the States, someone got in touch with me this year and said they're coming from North Carolina. I mean, that's a long way to drive. But if you've got the time, like if you're retired or you have that much vacation, why not? 